Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day. I'd almost rather be home working in dirt. Not quite, but but I like I like working in dirt. Actually, I even have clean fingernails this morning. Hey, you know what? What's really neat about March? We have five Sundays this month. So we had Christopher Christopher last week, and we have a bonus Sunday this month. How nice is that? You know what happens on a bonus Sunday? Who knows? <laughs> I mean, we have something different. You know, we always, of course, you never know. You come to the Divine Fellowship and you're never quite sure exactly what you're going to get, although you do know one thing. You're going to get um, followers of the way, and you're probably going to get some spiritual stuff, and you're probably going to get them both. Sometimes it's going to be more followers of the way, a little bit more Bible-based. Sometimes it's over on the other side a little bit. And sometimes it's just a little bit of both. And you never know what you're going to get. Well, unless you read your emails. Then you'll know. But that's okay. They are teasers? Okay, okay. Um, our expo is coming up next month, um, April 12th and 13th. And this is really, really important to the church. Um, you know, Janice and I started this thing. Well, everybody started it. For actually 15 years ago for this, we skipped a year. I can't remember why we did that, but we did it for some reason after the second or third or first or whatever. Um, so for a lot of years, this is an outreach, outreach for the church. It's a spiritual outreach. And it's a way to show people that, guess what? You can combine Christianity with the spiritual. You can do it. Even though some people can't quite understand how you do it, if they come here, they see how you can do it. And you know what? That's because everybody that's sitting next to you has a different belief. Some of you are much more Christian than others, and some of you are way less than others. So it's just a good mix, and we actually combine the two. How neat is that? Okay. Two men, both seriously ill, occupied the same hospital room. One man was allowed to sit up in bed for an hour each morning to help drain the fluid from his lungs. His bed was next to the room's only window. The other man had to spend all of his time flat on his back. The men talked for hours on end. They spoke to their wives, their families, their homes, their jobs, their involvement in the military service uh, where they had been on vacation, where they had been on vacation. Every afternoon when the man in the bed by the window could sit up, he would pass the time by describing to his roommate all the things he could see outside the window. The man in the other bed began to live for those one hour periods where his wor world would be broadened and enlivened by the, all the activity and color of the outside world. The window overlooked a park with lovely lake, ducks, swans played in the water while children sailed their boats. Young lovers walked arm in arm amidst flowers of every color and a fine view of the city skyline could be seen in the distance. As the man by the window described all this in exquisite details, the man on the other side of the room would close his eyes and imagine this picturesque scene. One afternoon, the man by the window described a parade passing by. Although the other man could not hear the band, he could see it in his mind's eye as the gentleman by the window portrayed it with descriptive words. Days, weeks, months passed. One morning, the day nurse arrived to bring the water for their baths, only to find the, the lifeless body of the man by the window, who had died peacefully in his sleep. She was saddened and called the hospital attendant to take the body away. As soon as it seemed appropriate, the other man asked, if he could be moved next to the window. The nurse was happy to make the switch, and after making sure he was comfortable, she left him alone. Slowly, painfully, he propped himself up on one elbow to take a look at the real world outside. He strained to slowly turn to look out the window beside his bed. It faced a blank wall. The man, sorry. <laughs> uh, the man asked uh, what could have compelled his deceased roommate who had described such wonderful things outside the window. The nurse responded that the man was blind and could not even see the wall. She said, perhaps he just wanted to encourage you. Nice. Yeah, we're not sure who did it, but nice story. Nice story. So, anyway. Uh, genetically speaking, zebras are black with white stripes. Not white with black stripes. They have black skin even under the white hair. I bet you didn't know that. See, you learn something every time you come to church. Isn't that amazing? No, I don't want to go to cucumbers. No, thanks. <laughs> Things that make you go, hmm. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. That was uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. 
Observe due measure, for right timing is in all things the most important factor. That was um, Hesiod in 700 BC. You made smart people back then. Yeah. Imagine that. I don't know. Uh, oh, frontier communications had very few books. Frontier communities had very few books. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. It made no sense at all. Only the Bible and Webster's Speller were circulated on a national basis. So the books that were available were used until they literally fell apart. Mothers taught their children his or her letters using one of the two or three books available to the village. Uh, at times it was necessary for the mothers to commit these books to memory. So when a housewife was familiar with the subject, she said she knew it like a book. This usage entered our speech as an expression that means complete understanding. Hmm. I'll be darned. Hey, and we do have two patron saints, George Carlin and John Lennon. And if you're around long enough, I'll explain that. But there is a very good reason for that. Um, John, I dream you dream alone. A dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. Interesting. And George, ever irreverent George, most people work just hard enough not to get fired and not get paid just enough money not to quit. It's George. Hey, you know where uh, April Fool's Day came from? Because that's like day after tomorrow. Uh, it's murky, but the roots of All Fool's Day, as it's sometimes called, dates back to about the 1500s as an occasion to perpetuate tomfoolery, possibly in reaction to spring's mercurial weather. It's observed on April 1st in many Western countries, including lately, including Italy and France. I know I can't talk, including lately, yeah. I don't know where lately is. Uh, uh, where pranksters cry, April fish, as they tape paper poissons to people's backs. And Scotland, where Googie Day makes a anyone a potential gook or cuckoo. Is that true? Would somebody type in on YouTube and tell us from Scotland if this is true? Because we don't know. It's in the paper. It must be true, right? So. Do we have anybody in Scotland? Do we know? Uh, England. England. Yeah, we do have somebody. In, well, somebody in England might know. So type in and tell us if that's that's true or not. I remember in my head right now. I don't think Scotland is on the list. Okay. I know Ireland is. I know Ireland. Well, there you go. We're, there. We're good. We're good. Committee, a body that keeps minutes and wastes hours. <laughs> Dust, mud with the juice squeezed out. <laughs> Egotist, someone who is usually me-deep in conversation. Okay. Uh, a couple is lying in bed. The man says, I'm going to make you the happiest woman in the world. The woman replies, I'll miss you. Oh, it's all in timing. It's all in timing. A wife invited some people to dinner. At the table, she turned to their, her six-year-old daughter and said, Would you like to say the blessing? I wouldn't know what to say, the girl replied. Just say what, you're, you, what you hear your mommy say. You know where this is going, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. The wife answered. The daughter bowed her head and said, Lord, why on earth did I invite all these people to dinner? <laughs> Yep. Yep. Okay. And one last one. Yay! Okay. Should we talk about anything else like the expo or? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Right now? Well, yeah. Okay. I'll follow it up with one more. Oh. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I was on a roll. Sorry. I have got another couple of really cool items that have been coming in for the silent auction and I wanted to show this one off because this one is like everybody here is going to want it. I want that box. Everybody. Yeah. That was a box. Man, that was amazing. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. 
was I lying or what? Okay, there's wow. going to be a fight over this one. <laughs> I can see it now. Do you want to be recognized as to who? Okay. What about the other item I've got here? I'll ask you. It's not rose, I don't no. think. It's not rose. No, it's a quartz. And then we also have some uh, chakra stones, bags that were made up. And do you want to be recognized? Okay. I won't recognize them then, but a beautiful job. She made the bags and she's got the stones. These oh. are uh, chakra stones and bags. Cool. We also have gotten some more um, CDs and, and things like that. We're going to be putting these things together as little packets adding one of these to each one and that way it'll make up some really cool you know there'll be some different um, meditation CDs inspirational CDs put together so it'll be quite fun to have you know these and the little bags so and so we're still we've got two weeks I think don't we have like two weeks left to gather items we're still in desperate need of some more items we've got some beautiful things that have come in <laughs> she's laughing over here and so that's kind of, you know, why I'm bringing them up so I can show you what's been coming in and what some ideas you might have out there of, of your own that, that you can bring in for us. Um, volunteers, do I need to mention them? Volunteers, we need more? You're going to, okay, good. Okay, you're next. I'm next. You're next then. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, he wants to just oh, he wants to follow up with the joke. Okay, maybe it's a good thing. See these little pink stickies here? These represent um, our need for volunteers. And each one, some has eight, some has two, some has four. And so when I heard we were low on volunteers, I got really upset. Now here's the deal with upset. Upset is that wonderful moment when you realize you're being set up for something. True? So I had to ask, what am I being set up for? Because you can choose to either stay emotionally charged about something, or you can shift and either change yourself, change your circumstances, whatever. So when you're upset, you can't change without additional information, clarity, and purpose. I had none of those. So I thought, oh, you know, okay, I'm upset. I need more information. So it was like, okay, what volunteers do we need? Nobody knew. I was like, what are we doing? How many years have we been doing this expo? What's wrong with it? And I got upset again. And I thought, okay, I need to look at what am I being set up for? Oh, I got it. When we first started the expo years and years and years ago, we had two readers, no healers, in tiny little show. Um, now we have four reader, reader tables. We're only going to use three this time. And in times past, we've only had one healer table. We now have two. Uh, we didn't have but one lecture at a time. We now have two lectures going on simultaneously. So we have, we have expanded our expo tremendously since the day we started. So that's a big thing. And, and it used to be, hey, let's just show up. We'll put on a show. And people would, everybody from church would show up and it got done. Well, now it's a little more complicated in our world. So we need people who have a different skill set to do different things. Um, so I want to read to you what we've got here because you need information. So as soon as I knew the information that, okay, we're different, and now we need to have information for you, how can you volunteer if you don't know what the heck we want? <laughs> so let me share with you, and there's little cards in the pew in front of you, and if you're viewing on, you can type us and let us know, or give us a call, whatever. Because th there's like 44 man hour slots that if we don't have them filled we can't do a show we're two weeks away we're going to do it anyway but it's going to be a lot of hard work for a few where it could be a lot of fun for all of us so let's take it out of that realm of it's hard work and let's move it into the realm of let's have some fun 
It's got to be about fun. If it ain't fun, why are we doing it? Right? Right. So. We need signs put out Saturday morning and probably brought in and put back out Saturday, Sunday morning. We probably need a couple of people for that. If that's something you're willing to do, put your name and phone number on a piece of paper, on a card, and when the contribution basket comes around, throw it in. Well, the whole deal. So if you want to, if you're going to do the signs, you're going to do the deal, right? Okay. So, name and phone number. We need to talk to you about that. Okay. Need a couple people for that. Ticket takers. We need eight more people to sit, stand at the door, sit at the door, and take money. If we can't take money, why are we doing this thing? This is hundreds of hours of effort. We need to be able to take people's money. They want to give us money because they want to come. And it would be wonderful to have people to be there to receive that. Isn't that wonderful? We need eight people for that. And we need three more people to do... Um, Welcoming. Now here's the deal. You don't have to sit at that desk the entire time. This is a two-hour block of time. Two hours! <laughs> we need seven more readers. If you have contact with Divine Source, if you're connected with the Divine Source, and you have a modality, if you're waiting to be perfect, stop it. <laughs> Step up, sign up. Because there are people who are waiting to get some insight. They don't need you to be perfect. They don't need you to be a professional. They just need somebody who's willing to shut up and get out of their own way, open up, and then share the insights. If you have more insights than the person across the table, sign up. Two hours. Two. Two hours. Two hours. So what was the comment? So? It's scary. Only the first few times. Kids activities. If we don't get people to sign up to show up for the kids activities, how can we have kids activities? And here's the deal. Grown-ups show up for the kids activities. The kids activities are uh, making prayer sticks, coloring mandalas. Who doesn't need to color now and then? Two hours. Play with children for two hours. We need six more people to do that. The Divine Fellowship booth. That's sitting at the Divine Fellowship booth, helping people who are ready to get a reading or a healing. Oh, by the way, we have a bazillion healers signed up. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, awesome. This is the first time I've not had to put a call out there for, for readers or, or for healers. Thank you. There's a, this room is full of people who have this wonderful, loving, healing touch, filled with compassion. Thank you for that. The Divine Fellowship booth will hand out flyers, will hand out, uh, will help people sign up so they can get a, a reading or a healing. Uh, we'll also have raffle tickets for our amazing raffle items, which is the beautiful handmade quilt and that beautiful handmade wooden box. So we need four more. That's all. Four more. A couple of hours. A couple of hours. We need a gob of people for lectures. Lectures. Because here's the deal. Somebody comes in and does a lecture, and they get talking and talking and talking and talking. And we need someone in our group that can hold up a sign that says, you have 10 minutes, you have five minutes, shut up. <laughs> we don't say that. We say zero, and then we can come up and tap them on the shoulder and say, we need to move this along. We have somebody in charge of that. We got somebody that's already scheduled. We see somebody sit in the back of the room and help these people be aware of the timing, okay? Because there's people that are, the next lecturer needs to get in and get set up and get all that stuff. We also probably need a runner to go and tell the next lecturer who's probably busy in their booth to come and, and their lecture is in 10 minutes. Make sense? 
Okay, so we need some help with that. It's the quicker shutter upper, I don't know. Yes. As many as we can get, I think. At least four. It would be nice to have more. So then those four people aren't sitting through every single lecture. They can actually get to do other things. Um, set up where we tape the floor. Not my favorite job. But you know what? Only a couple of hours. We got an opportunity to go in Thursday night from 6 to 8 and do the ballrooms. And then the other two rooms we can do Saturday morning. So we need a couple of people. Um, if we could have... Th Friday, Friday, morning. Friday morning. Yes, Friday morning. So Thursday night, 6 to 8, if I could have a couple more people with that. And then if we could have at least three or four on Saturday morning. Um, Friday morning. Friday morning. Um, we're gonna get the, we get to be in there at 8 o'clock. They're going to be blessing, but they can bless around us. And, then the people do the grading and, stuff. and the grading and stuff. I think that's already got, we already got that covered. Silent auction. We're going to put those baskets together. When you, have you decided when? Tomorrow night, we're going to have the dealers and readers practice. Okay, so some of that tomorrow night. We have a reader's healers practice tomorrow. If you're thinking about being a reader, come practice. You can always say, you know, I chicken out. It's way okay. It's way okay. But I'd really like to see you try. Why not? Uh, so, if we have a couple people that are here for that, we could, that would really, really be helpful. And then someone to help vendors get in, find their spots, um, and get set up. I'm not doing that this year. <laughs> I'm not going to be here for that this year. I'm going home. I'm going to rest for the show. You're going to be there? Okay, we need a couple more. That's from one to six. You're going to be there? Okay, that's covered. Okay, we got that covered then. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so if you saw anything in there that you would like to help with, or if you're not sure, you don't know what timing is, put your name and phone number on, on a slip of paper. When the contribution comes around, slip it in there. Uh, Lori Miller is going to give you a call and say, here's what we can do. Would you be willing to do that? Does that make sense? Without us all working together, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And without us giving you information, how can you serve? You know, we have got the coolest batch of people in the world. There's so much love and compassion and care and willingness to be of service, and we have let you down in the past by not communicating with you clearly. And I apologize for that. But that's the value of being upset is we get to look at things and go, oh, I get to do it differently this year. Does that make sense? You had a comment, Joe? Yes. Uh, it's, it's a fun weekend. It's fun. Volunteer for more than one thing. Volunteer for lots of stuff. Yeah, Joe says volunteer for more than one thing. Absolutely. And you know what? If you're a volunteer, you get in free. If $6 is a stretch in your budget, volunteer. What the heck? Susan. Lori Miller. And Shannon, and Shannon for healers and, and readers. And I think lectures are done. Our lectures not, are, we've got enough. One or two more spaces. We need more lectures. Talk to Josie or Sandra. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Josie just said, uh, for those on the recording, if you need a list for anything, she's got this master sheet that has all kinds of data. So if you need information, talk to Josie. She can get it for you. She can give you a list of anything. Okay, flyers. Hand out flyers. Flyers, flyers, flyers. I took a bunch to the hotel already. They're happy to... Yeah, walk in places and ask them if they have a break room. It's awesome. Get the word out. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Because it is fun. We wouldn't do this if this wasn't phenomenally amazing. How many people have been to our expo? 
Do you love it? Absolutely. And that's why we're doing all of this. So I got a little upset because I'm hoping to set you up <laughs> to take a look that you probably have more abilities than you think you do. And we need you. It's important. So thank you for that. Yes, ma'am? Um, what time tomorrow is the six to, six thirty to eight is the reader healer practice. Yes. So give us just a try. Just try. We'll see you then. Thanks. Mr. Bill. Obviously we've had a lot of housekeeping this morning. I apologize for that, but um, you know, we have to do it. It is an important thing for us. The show is very, very important. Um, it, uh, we use it to help fund a lot of the projects around the church. You know, like the women's restroom has to get redone, and there's a bunch of stuff in the back that has to get redone. That's how we get the money for it, it was for the, from the show. So anyway, okay. National Institute of Health has just released the results of a $200 million research study on longevity in men and women that was completed under a grant to John Hopkins. The new study has found that women who carry a little weight uh, live longer than the men who mention it. <laughs> Hi. Uh, this should be interesting. I don't know if the uh, chainsaws and uh, chipper have stopped next door, but this could be an interesting service. So, we do have a guest speaker today, and that is always a wonderful thing. We like volunteers, and uh, this person has been. Gosh, she's been with us for well, quite some time now. Helps me with the fountain in the morning, and helps do a lot of things around the church. So we're always grateful for, for people that help and volunteer and do things as we are for everyone else. Um, he has got a, an interesting background. I don't know him as well as I probably should, but that's okay. I know he's um, been in project management uh, with the government for many, many years, so he's kind of good at talking with people and arranging things and getting things done. Has a, uh, you know, as Daryl does, has a, a native uh, background as far as um, interests. So I know he does sweat lodges and does a lot of different things like that. So, um, you know, we just like to hear from him. So I guess without further ado, Dan. Good morning and thank you. Now we know that Phil can bring it down as well as bring it up. <laughs> it's a bright and beautiful day. It doesn't matter what the weather is out there. The bright and beautiful comes from inside of us. So let us today shine from inside and make the whole world bright and beautiful as we can. How fast do people go in life? Some of us go 20 miles an hour, some of us go 60, some of us go 100. This morning what I want to talk about is running at the speed of life. We all have a speed of life. The speed of life is what it is. Our speeds are different. And if we run at the speed that we're supposed to, we then get done what we're designed to do and designed to be in this life go-around. Each person's life speed is what it is. No two are the same. If we run at the life speed we're supposed to, the cadence gives us peace. The cadence gives us quiet. The cadence gives us purpose. When we don't run at the life speed that Creator has given us, or Source, or Universe, or whatever word you want, my bent is Creator, so I'll use that with your permission. If we don't run at the life speed we're supposed to, what occurs is chaos. We have a little example. Mr. Phil, if you're ready to... to uh -oh. show. the computer is running at its own speed. <laughs> 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 Well, what I will do is speed along, and when it is ready, I'll you, up. you can let me know. Okay. I would offer that if our life speed, whatever it is, has been ordained to us by the Creator as we came into this life, 
and we are running at the life speed that Creator has ordained for us, then we are in the optimum position to do what we need to do, to give what we need to give, to be who we need to be and receive what we need to receive in this life. However, if we're not calibrated well or if there is an instance where we make a choice to try to run at a life speed that is not our own, try to run slower with someone or faster with someone, sooner or later we're going to burn out because that cadence is forced. It's not creator or universe ordained. It's something that we try to put on ourselves or something we believe we need to do because someone else says we need to do it. That's a formula for failure. I would offer to you that the only way we can in a good way get through this life is to get quiet enough to know what our life speed is. Be solid enough in the fact that it is creator or universe ordained. Know that it's okay to run at our own life speed and do so. And I'll give you an example. I run about 60 miles an hour. Erlene runs about 100 miles an hour. She's been known to go Mach 2 now and then. You know, I look in the horizon like, mm -hmm, and I just wave at this colorful, colorful flash going by. She'll come around and she'll slow down, or not, mm -hmm, and off she goes again, and I wave again. I can try to keep up. Ms. Dennis, are we ready? All right, let's show you what chaos in life speed might look like. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What am I supposed to do, Mr. Phil? Yeah. And see, Janice is coming up here at her own speed. <laughs> I heard something. I see light. Don't go towards it. I think I'm through. Why don't you come up here? Okay. <laughs> Do you know anybody like that? <laughs> Let him know. Whether it's a freeway or a Walmart or where you work, you get it, right? So what you saw were a variety of creatures running at different life speeds. Not well coordinated. And the other thing you saw was that the faster life speeds, in some cases, not only got in the way of the lower life speeds, but actually pushed them down. So one of the things we need to consider that as we run at these different life speeds, we're not on this earth alone. We have to be aware of others around us and the life speeds that they run because they're different. Now going back to Erlene and me, she can run 100 miles an hour all day. I can't. I can speed up to about 80 once in a while and when she can, she can slow down to 80. And what that does is put us at a speed where Creator can give us the we things that we need to better enable us to walk in this life together. But we cannot always be at that speed. 
sooner or later she's going to have to get up to 100 miles an hour because that's how Creator made her. Sooner or later I'm going to have to get back to 60 because that's how Creator made me. And I would offer this, if you're running at a compromised speed that is different than the two partners involved, sooner or later you've got to slow down because it's who you are. If you don't, essentially spiritual growth suffers. What I would offer is one of our greatest spiritual awakenings could be understanding and recognizing that life speed sweet spot that Creator has prepared for us. That place where you know that you walk in peace, you walk in comfort, you walk in strength, you walk in what you know Creator has put on this earth for you. Why? If you walk at your life speed, even when you have to speed up or slow down for someone else, if you walk at your life speed, I would offer that you are in the optimum place to receive from Creator what it is you need. You're in the optimum place to receive from Creator what it is you need to pass on to others. So receiving, getting, receiving, acceptance, whatever word you want, you can best accomplish that by walking in the life speed Creator has ordained for you. How do you know what your life speed is? Get quiet. In your heart and your mind, get quiet. If you're running along and you recognize that you're frazzled, if you recognize that you're confused, if you recognize that you're full of anxiety, those are some pretty good signs that you're not running at the life speed that Creator has designed for you. Be strong enough to recognize that it doesn't matter what life speed other people run. Yours is a gift from Creator and it is yours alone. Going back to Erlene and myself, I recognize that she has a gift of 100 miles an hour. I recognize that I don't have to keep up with her. She recognizes I have a speed of 60 miles an hour. She does not have to slow down for me. Once in a while, when we know it to be right, we will come together at a speed that works for both of us. It is all good. I would offer too that if you try to run faster, or you try to run slower, either one. If you go back to the old cars with a carburetor, it's like tinkering with your life speed, tinkering with a carburetor. You can cough and sputter and you can try to make it work, but every time you step on the gas or hit the brake, what's going to happen? The engine's going to cough and it's going to quit. You cannot for very long outrun your life speed. You cannot for very long go slower than Creator has ordained you to go. It's just the way it is. So what I would offer today that our spiritual lessons are best learned when we, one, can recognize where we are in our life speeds. Speed up or slow down to find that sweet spot that I'm talking about. Mine is probably 55 to 65. Erlene's is 173 to 500. I mean, that's just where she is. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while, she can slow down. But if you're willing to let Creator guide you to the sweet spot the set point for your life speed, several things happen. The first of which is you become centered. The second of which is you gain peace. The third of which is you gain strength. The fourth of which is you gain courage because you know you are functioning in this life with Creator's energy right where you're supposed to be. And if you go slower than someone else, it doesn't mean you're not going to get done what you need to. If Creator has ordained a speed for you, if Creator has ordained a speed for me, He also knows that that speed is what we need to be, what we need to be for Him, to do what He needs done for, for whatever occurs in this life, either for our own selves or for others around us. Compromise when you can, but recognize that the compromise cannot be maintained all the time. Be secure enough in a relationship to recognize that the speeds are different, honor those different speeds and allow them. And when doing so, you will find that the compromise speed necessary for the we to grow will be there and you will recognize it. It will be clear to you because you're quiet, because you're at peace, because you're strong, and because you're courageous. I would offer too that any life speed you have to make a decision whether or not you are self or creator driven, 
are whether or not you are forced and driven by someone else, either slower or faster. If you are self-driven or creator-driven, it is something that can be sustained because it comes from source. It comes from the universe. It is your frequency and it's dialed in to help you keep going and do and be what you need to be. If it is other driven, if I make a decision that I'm going to try to keep up with her or for some reason at work somebody says something and I need to be faster, that's other driven. And it is likely not something that comes from Creator and it's not likely to be something I can sustain. Be of courage, be of goodwill, find your sweet set spot and in that set spot be there. One of the ways you can do that is to get quiet and what we're going to do is get quiet and talk about the labyrinth for a minute. In a labyrinth, one of the things I would ask you to consider is that you don't have to be afraid to be in a labyrinth. Unlike a maze, with a labyrinth there's one way in and it's the same way out. Whether the labyrinth is, is very uh, complex like the one at Chartres in France, those of you who have seen that picture you know it's huge. Or whether it's the seven or nine ring like the chalice labyrinth or whether it's a simple four ring labyrinth, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter whether you go in this way or you go in that way. When you enter a labyrinth, you cannot get lost. You cannot get lost. You can be safe walking into the labyrinth. Okay, what does that have to do with life speed? Ah, in a labyrinth, get quiet. Know what your life speed is because as you walk into the labyrinth to give away and receive, the only way you're going to optimize getting what you need, letting go of what you need, is to know what your life speed is and walk it quietly into the labyrinth, receive what you need and walk it quietly out. The labyrinth is something that maybe you've not thought of before because as you go into the center, the source is there, the universe is there, creator is there, that is the center. So in walking a labyrinth, if you can do so quietly, you can walk in and essentially meet source, meet universe, meet creator. Ask for what you need, receive what you need, and turn around and walk back out and continue your life walk. Now, here's what I would suggest, and we're going to get into a meditation here. Here's what I would suggest you consider. As you come to the labyrinth, open your hands. Your hands are the connection to your head and to your heart. Your hands hold things tight. If there are things, and there probably are for most of us, that need to go away, in gratitude, open your hands. Turn them over. And begin the walk. And When we do the meditation, we'll do this. Leave your hands with palms down and allow that which needs to come out of your head and heart to go away. We have what's called gravity. That which needs to go away will. As we do this, if you find yourself wanting to turn your hands over or close them, stop. Be of good cheer. Be of courage. Seek your center in peace. Turn your hands back over. If you try to do this, that's a good indication that what you're hanging on to is probably the thing you really need to let go of. Okay? Turn your hands over. Walk all the way in to the center. And in gratitude, once you've gotten to the center, be thankful to Creator or Universe that you're there. And only then, turn your hands over. And in gratitude, be ready to accept what Creator will have for you. When you're done, and you'll know if you're quiet, what your speed is, you'll know when you're done. When you turn around to walk out of the labyrinth, keep your hands like this. Because in this walk, you never know where in the labyrinth you will receive the gifts that are ordained for you to receive during this process. Walk all the way out to the edge of the labyrinth. Turn around and face the center and in gratitude, thank the universe for what you've been given and be done. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to take you into a meditation with this. Let's turn the lights out.